Hi. So I am going to lecture on the cell membrane, which you already read about in chapter four of your book. And um, so the first thing we're going to do is take a look at this picture. Do you notice anything that is the text, any of the text familiar at this point? So I'm looking at the word polar. Do you remember what that means? We learned about that with water. And so there are charged regions of this phospholipid head, um, and that's going to make it like water, so it will be hydrophilic. And I'm also noticing the word cholesterol. When we read up on, on um, lipids, you learned about cholesterol and proteins. Hopefully you remember they're made of amino acids. And phospholipids, so this is the particular structure of the cell membrane. I think of it as like a balloon with two strings coming off and those strings, notice how they're pointed um, towards each other and notice how the balloons are pointed um, away from each other because these balloons are pointing towards the water that's surrounding these cells um, inside and out. Um, carbohydrate chain. So you learned about carbohydrates and glycoprotein. So this is called a glycoprotein because this is protein and there's carbohydrate coming off of it. So you, you're going to see some familiar information in this lecture. Here's a more detailed structure, different color. So you can see the orientation of the phospholipids. So this is one phospholipid, another phospholipid. Do a pointer here. Um, the blue in this particular diagram, these are proteins. And so you have integral membrane proteins, which sometimes have um, structures coming off of them, which identify the cell. We'll be talking about these channel proteins, holes in the cell membrane that let things through dependent on size. So you do need to write this down um, as you're listening to this lecture, get it into your comp book so you have it for any quizzes. So the cell membrane is made up of lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. And you can see them in this picture. So what BIM is missing? Well, the fourth BIM, it's not here. What is it? And if you thought of nucleic acid, you are correct. So there is no nucleic acid in a cell membrane. The function of the cell membrane, so I'm gonna talk about the plasma membrane, which is the outermost part of the cell. And I'm also gonna talk about the internal membranes, like all these organelles that you've been reading about, like the mitochondrion, and the lysosomes and the vacuoles and the Golgi body, these are all made up of membrane, just like you saw the, the picture before. This is the nucleus, which is surrounding the DNA and protecting it, that's made up of membrane. And so this is a eukaryotic cell, and I know that because it has a nucleus. Right next to the nucleus, you'll see this um, blue structure, which almost looks like the Golgi apparatus, um, but it's not, it's also made up of membrane and this is called the ER or the endoplasmic reticulum. And you can see these little blue dots on here. That's a type of organelle that's actually not membrane bound. And that's, it's called a ribosome and it will help with the manufacturing of the information that's on the DNA. So we'll be learning about that. And you learn that prokaryotic cells also have ribosomes. Seeing if there's anything else interesting here. So um, the function of the cell membrane, um, it helps to organize the inside of the cell into compartments that do different functions. Um, the plasma membrane, which is the one on the outside, creates a barrier which protects the cell, stops things from getting in, at least most things. And then the proteins are embedded in the um, cell membrane, which you don't really see here, but you saw in the pictures before. Um, they're really what carry out the specific functions, and we'll look at them next. So here's a picture of the different types of proteins you would see embedded in the cell membrane. You can see the phospholipids here that are yellow. Um, so I'm going to use this pointer. Um, we're only going to focus on a few of these proteins, but just know there are more. So we will focus on receptor proteins when we talk about insulin. We'll focus on channel proteins when we look at diffusion and how things get in and out of a cell. 
Um, and then we will focus on cell identity markers when we um, do the immune system. You can see the glycoprotein or glycolipid that's coming up here that's helping with that. I wish we had time to talk about the nervous system and gated channels, but we will not get to that. And I'm not sure at this point whether we're going to get to cellular respiration and learning about um, an enzyme that's in the membrane of a mitochondria called ATP synthase. Um, so we'll see. Now, I'm going to erase these because when I started this before, they ended up on the next slide. So hopefully you've written down those three different types of proteins and a little bit about them. So receptor proteins um, bind to chemical messengers, such as hormones like insulin. Channel proteins allow things to pass. And these um, proteins, these markers, um, act as identification. So you, hopefully you have that in your notes. Here's even more detailed structure of a phospholipid. So here's the balloon, and you can see the phosphate in there um, that has a charge, and you, you can see the glycerol. You built glycerol when you built a fat during the building molecule. You can see it says hydrophilic head, and here are the hydrophobic tails, long um, carbons. Here's a bent saturated fat with that double bond. And so hopefully this looks familiar. So phospholipids are made up of glycerol and fatty acids. The head is polar, likes water. The tail um, hates water. It is hydrophobic or nonpolar. Um, the chemistry of the lipid bilayer allows, um, allows some things to pass through. So water can actually pass right through these phospholipids. The tails are going to move away when it does that. Um, um, so the, the whole membrane is fluid. They call it the fluid mosaic model because it the phospholipids move, and those proteins are the mosaics in there, and they can move around also. I did miss um, over here. There is a um, video I'd like you to watch, um, two minutes of it. It's on cell membrane functionality, so if you can click on that and go and watch it and take notes, that would be great. There's another short movie on um, the plasma membrane. And um, so go ahead and click on that and watch that and take notes on that too. I always like seeing real pictures of the structure. So here's, you know, an artist rendition. You can see we've been looking at that with the red proteins embedded in there. And actually here, um, you can see how it's a bilayer. So here are the phospholipid heads um, here and here. And you can't really make out the tails in the center, but you can see how, see how there's a, and a blank space up here and a blank space here. And so um, you know, that's a pretty close up picture. What type of microscope do you think did that? If you said transmission electron microscope, you were correct, TEM. Well, I took that picture of that cell membrane. Way back at the beginning of the year, we talked about the three domains of life. You read about it. Um, bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. Um, our book spelled it with a K. Um, and so we are in the eukarya domain because we have eukaryotic cells, whereas these two domains have prokaryotic cells. So cell membranes are in every single solitary type of cell. It doesn't matter. Um, they have um, a membrane in there that is like a plasma membrane that um, protects the cell. So it's found in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. It's found in all three domains. Um, it's found on the outside of a cell, unless there's a cell wall, if there's a cell wall, then it's inside that cell wall. So bacteria have cell walls, um, plants have cell walls, and they will have the membrane on the inside. There's only one plasma membrane per cell. Um, this is a kingdom, this is a eukaryotic kingdom called Protista. Maybe you got to see some um, scum from the fish tank and you saw little things swimming around. Um, those were protozoa, which is a type of protist. Um, I think you guys saw stentors, um, which I don't have the picture here. But if you do want to see these, um, these animal-like um, organisms hunting 
each other. You can see how the amoeba would hunt a paramecium. It's kind of cool and creepy to watch this video. Cells are like factories, really and truly. And we're going to work on that next week with how uh, mammal cells make um, milk. So cells will produce CO2 when they do cellular respiration. All cells do cellular respiration. Um, cells will produce enzymes to help run the cell. Um, so like if you have um, H2O2, um, you will make a, um, which is hydrogen peroxide, by the way, your body makes it as a product. Um, your body has to make catalase, which is an enzyme to break that down right away. Otherwise it, it poisons your body. Um, all your cells manufacture ATP and all cells do that. That would be a cellular respiration thing, which I hope we get to. Um, cells um, produce different um, proteins. So you learned about dehydration synthesis and how monomers pop together to make polymers and which are assimilated into your body. After you digest those parts, they're going to go and pop together to build bigger molecules. I like to think about um, when you're talking about an organelle, hey, what, what happens if there's a defect in that organelle? And there's a uh, um, genetic disease you may have heard of called cystic fibrosis. And cystic fibrosis is a defect in the cell membrane, in particular a protein channel um, that helps bring um, sodium chloride through the um, channel. And so this protein is not functioning. Um, and so there's a buildup of salt on one side of the membrane and that draws water. And then of course, on the other side of the membrane, there's mucus because you've pulled all the water out. Um, cystic fibrosis, um, I think it's like one in um, 3,000 people, I think, um, have it. And they have all sorts of um, ways that you can take care of it. If you're interested in um, meeting someone with cystic fibrosis, you can click this link here and um, meet a girl you have to like um, scan down a little bit you can see um, how she manages her cystic fibrosis so i know you had to come up with analogies for um, organelles um, you can click on this link right here um, which is a crash course and meet hank and he'll talk about the different organelles to add to your understanding and he comes up with great analogies um, and you can add that to your chart um, cell membranes are different than cell walls. So you saw cell membranes are made up of phospholipids. Cell walls are made up of lignin and cellulose, those structural carbohydrates that you learned about when we were doing the leaf lab way at the beginning of the year. So, so they're both boundaries of a cell, but they're made of very different types of things. Here's an optional Bozeman review if you want to um, go through this again. Um, it's a lot of information to upload and um, hopefully by the time you take the test, you're going to feel comfortable with these organelles. And we're also going to do a project next week, which will help you be comfortable. All right. So there's my footnoting. I hope this was helpful. And um, now, hopefully, I'm going to stop this.